We now have a pretty complicated diagram that I have drawn earlier. But the setup is the same as what we were doing before. We have an initial budget constraint, I call it here BL1, and a final budget constraint, I call it BL3. So as before, what happens here is that the price of X falls. So the budget constraint expands, the affordable set expands in the X direction. A is the initial point of the consumer. I wanted to draw f uh, five different consumers on one diagram. They all have the same initial indifference curve, which is U0. But they have different final indifference curves. One of them has indifference curve U, one of them has indifference curve U1, one of them has indifference curve U2, one of them has indifference curve U3, and one of them has indifference curve U4. This could not be a diagram of just one consumer because an indifference curve like U and U1 are inconsistent with each other. If you extend them both, they're going to intersect and indifference curves can't intersect. So these are five different people, but they all have indifference curve U0. They all start at point A. The Budget constraint BL2 is the imaginary budget constraint. You recall that the imaginary budget constraint needs to be drawn parallel to the new one. So BL2 has to be parallel to BL3 and tangent to the original indifference curve. So BL2 has to be tangent to U0, and it is. With this setup, I'm going to explain how I come to the conclusions that are given in the typewritten table on the upper right. First I'm going to discuss the last column, this third column, complements and substitutes. When I taught you about complements and substitutes, that was before we got into the whole imaginary budget constraint thing. So when you're trying to determine complements and substitutes, you totally forget about the imaginary budget constraint BL2, you forget about point B. So all you have is point A as the initial point and then some final point. From point A I've drawn a line horizontal, that's this one, and a line that's vertical. This divides the new budget constraint into three different regions as I had done it before. I'll consider these consumers one by one. So first we'll take the consumer who starts out at A and ends up, well, let's call this point, uh, let's, see, let's call this C, call this D, E, F, and G. A consumer that starts at A and goes to C. This is the consumer with indifference curve U that corresponds to the first line of the table. When you go from A to C, and remember the substitutes and complements is always starting from point A. When you go from A to C, <coughs> you go to the right, so X goes up, and you go down, so Y goes down, so they move in opposite directions, so they're substitutes. That's why the first row has substitutes. Let's go to the next person. He starts out at A, he ends up at point D with indifference curve U1. D lies to the right of A, so X has gone up. D lies below A, so Y has gone down. So they move in opposite directions. That means, <coughs> excuse me, they're substitutes. Now let's go to the next person. Starts out at A and goes to E with a difference curve U2. E lies to the right of A, so X has gone up. E lies above A, so Y has gone up. Hence they move in the same direction, X has gone up, Y has gone up. Complements. Next person. Starts out at A, ends up at point F with a difference curve U3. F lies to the right of A, that, mean, that means X has gone up. F lies above A, that means Y has gone up. Both of them have moved in the same direction, complements. 
And then we have the person with indifference curve U4 who starts out at A and, and, and ends up at G. G lies to the left of A, so X has gone down. G lies above A, so Y has gone up. So X has gone down, Y has gone up, opposite directions. That means, this is a little Y here, it's a little hard to read. Opposite directions, that means they're substitutes. So that explains the third column, column of substitutes and complements.